Salutations, Celestial Sightseers. I'm David Fuller. Welcome to Eyes on the Sky. What's up this week? Last week, we were in Leo, and we were looking at a couple of the gal actually three of the galaxies, uh, by the kind of the hind legs of the lion. So if we're back here in Leo, this is kind of where we were starting at this star, Churton. We're going to start again at that star because I think that's the easiest way to get to our next group of galaxies that we're going to look at for this week, which is actually four galaxies. Uh, and we will do our best to star hop there and try to do it a couple different ways because a couple of them are easy, one of them's not easy, and then another one's easier. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at where we are uh, back here, uh, closer to Denebola, not closer to Regulus. We're going to start here at this star, Churton, so use your magnified finder scope definitely to get going. Here's the lower half of Leo. Churton is here. We're going to take off our constellation lines so we have a better sense of, of what we're actually looking at. And then let's go ahead and uh, look at it as if it's a binocular field of view, so that 7 degrees field of view that we typically get. So there's 7 by 50 binoculars. Here's where we were at last week. But we need to go this direction instead. So um, the way that you kind of want to do that is you're going to want to go kind of towards where Regulus is uh, in this general direction. But the problem is, is that these galaxies are actually not going to show up like that. So let me actually bring these back down kind of out of the way. Uh, even the labels and markers will kind of do that. Uh, these are the stars that you're looking for. So you can see how they're actually a little further out than even the, the field of view is. So if we watch those kind of go away, there's Churton just barely over there. So what are we using to, to kind of align us? See this star right here? That's 81 Leonis. You can use that. And there's actually, you can see there's kind of three stars, six stars, six stars lined up that sort of help with this. These two stars and these two stars and these two stars. They all kind of point in the direction that we want to go. So you can sort of use all of those. Uh, if you have Churton uh, kind of in that field of view, don't get confused by these. Uh, but these ones, definitely these two, uh, Churton is really going to be the way you do that. So do this and just draw that line out and keep going. So we go all the way over there. See Churton's just leaving our field view. We're still going the same way. And there's those two stars. And these are fairly bright. Uh, we're looking at a, a five and a half magnitude star there. This one down here is a 5.3 magnitude star. So they're very similar in brightness. You're gonna wanna split that difference. And you probably will be able to see this star, which is a seventh magnitude star. I could just barely make out that one, sort of, averted vision, but this one is really the one that's going to help you because you're going to want to kind of focus in on that. Now let's look through our telescope at about a one degree field of view so we know that we're, what we're looking at. All right, so there is almost exactly uh, a one degree field of view. Well, a little bit more than that, maybe about a 1.1 degree field of view, but that's close enough. Uh, there's, we've centered that star and you can see how the galaxies are going to be in your field of view then. Uh, this one right here, actually, I'm sorry. These actually show up interestingly as stars for some reason, but we want to label them so we can click on our labels here uh, on Stellarium. And we can see this is M105. And then we've got NGC 3384 over here. M105 uh, and NGC 3384 are nearly identical. I mean, I, I could not tell the difference, really. They both kind of look like um, glowing eyes, sort of, <laughs> in the darkness there. There's not a lot of... These stars don't really show up to me. Uh, these, this, I mean, that's a 12.5 magnitude star. I was looking through a uh, six-inch telescope when I observed these. Uh, in preparation for this video. So I didn't really see a lot of other stars. I could see some of these, that was about it. And then here's these galaxies just sort of sitting out here by themselves. They were fairly bright, magnitude 9.7 is pretty decent. NGC 3384, uh, magnitude 10. Uh, so they're fairly bright. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and bring up uh, the surface brightness so you can see that too. There's the surface brightness by adding the additional information in the configuration window. Uh, so the surface brightness of NGC 3384 is 11.92. That's actually a fairly bright galaxy. Um, that's pretty decent. And then 
Uh, we got a surface brightness, oddly enough, of 13 for M105, which should be dimmer. So you might even ask yourself, how did Messier see M105 but not see NGC 3384 if they're both pretty much the same in brightness? Well, the thing is, that's not really what happened. Um, Messier's assistant, Pierre Machine, actually wound up uh, writing notes about M105, uh, and someone found those notes and said, oh, hey, look. Uh, these are the this is the galaxy that machine must have been talking about uh, for some reason he may not have written notes or the notes were not found for NGC 3384 because these are right next to each other you can't miss them uh, they're both elliptical galaxies that look almost identical in the sky NGC 3389 good luck seeing that one that's got a surface brightness of uh, almost 14 and a magnitude of 13 I could not see that in the six inch telescope so don't worry about too much about that one so now the question is, if there's not a lot of bright stars around there, and there aren't really good pointer stars to get you to the other galaxies, which we're going to look at, M95 and M96, how do we get there? Well, if you happen to have a an equatorial mounted telescope, this is actually simpler than you might think. So let's actually bring up the equatorial grid. Uh, and we'll see, oh, it's not going to do that if I have the telescope on. I'll have to do it this way. So we'll kind of do like what a, a one degree field approximately is. So uh, a one degree field, uh, let's see, field of view, yeah, about a little, that's a little bit larger than that. I'll help. We can kind of see where we're going then. So if you go just a little bit south, really just about one full degree south, so you can just take your slow motion control and move it so that you're, you're losing the galaxies kind of this way in your field of view, you're going to go down like this. And you might even find that star. That's a 10th magnitude star. That's That seems bright there, but it's really not. 10th magnitude, uh, it will be brighter than a lot of other stars in the area for sure. Uh, but you can probably even have that galaxy in your field of view. Let's see. Nope, there it is. Now remember, I've got a reflector set up here, so it's going to reverse it left to right. That's why M96 jumped over to the left side of the screen there. However, M96 I found to be really faint. This was not easy to find in a six inch telescope. Notice the surface brightness, it's 13. Notice the magnitude is nine, but that surface brightness means that it's not terribly bright. You're gonna have to use averted vision. You're probably gonna have to tap the telescope. Moving the telescope by doing the equatorial mount motion like that is actually what helped me find M96. Um, because I, as it was moving, that those rods that I talked about last week is what allowed me to be able to see where that little faint patch was. Now this is an, uh, uh, not an elliptical galaxy like uh, M105 and NGC 3384 were. This is actually a barred spiral and 96 is 31 million light years away so it's actually the closest of the three. Those other two are about 35 to 36 million light years away. Uh, now what we can do is it, I'll have to take this off unfortunately but now you can actually kind of uh, you can take your right ascension and move this direction over here and I'll just kind of pretend like we're actually moving it that way uh, you know what let me go ahead and do that actually with this so here was our, that was our 10th magnitude star we're gonna go this direction look there's M95 M95 is brighter uh, and I will show you how much brighter it is uh, the magnitude is 9.7 and that surface prices brightness is 11.8 that is probably the brightest of the three galaxies. And I did not have any difficult finding M95. The problem was, is there's not a lot of bright stars to guide you there. So you really want to start by going to your other stars first. I'm sorry, your other galaxies first, M104 and NGC 3384, which are in between those two nice bright seventh magnitude stars here. I'm sorry, fifth magnitude stars. This is our seventh magnitude star that's that kind of anchors where M105 is. And then when we zoom in, uh, we can find those two glowing eye galaxies. They kind of look like eyes. Go down to your tenth magnitude star, just leave that out of the field of view. Now you got M96. Move it back and forth so you can get that motion going to be able to see it. And then you can hop over and find M95, which happens to be uh, also a barred spiral galaxy, and it is uh, about 32 million light years away. So these, the photons from these galaxies have been traveling for millions of years. Don't waste them. Let them be seen by your eyes and say, thank you photons for traveling all that distance just so that I can see you and say, I found it. 
That's all for this week. Keep your eyes on the sky and your outdoor lights aimed down so we can all see what's up. I'm David Fuller, wishing you clear and dark skies.